Good morning, all, and a very merry 24th Sunday in Pentecost. Our opening hymn is Hymn 594. This morning we're on page 323. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. With thy spirit. Let us pray. O oh God, whose blessed Son was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil and make us the children of God and heirs of eternal life, grant us, we beseech thee, that having this hope, we may purify ourselves even as he is pure, that when he shall appear again with power and great glory, we may be made like unto him in his eternal and glorious kingdom. 
we are with thee, O Father, and thee, O Holy Ghost. He liveth and reigneth ever one God, world without end. Please be seated. Our Old Testament lesson this morning is taken from the first book of Kings. The word of the Lord came to Elijah, saying, Go now to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and live there, for I have commanded a widow there to feed you. So he set out and went to Zarephath. When he came to the gate of the town, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and said, Bring me a little water in a vessel so that I may drink. As she was going to bring it, he called to her and said, Bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. But she said, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked, only a handful of meal in a jar and a little oil in a jug. I am now gathering a couple of sticks so that I may go home and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. <clears throat> Elijah said to her, Do not be afraid. Go and do as you have said. But first, make a little cake of it and bring it to me. And afterwards, make something for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, the jar of meal will, be, will not be emptied, and the jug of oil will not fail until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. She went and did as Elijah said, so that she as well as he and her household ate for many days. The jar of meal was not emptied, neither did the jug of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord that he spoke to Elijah. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm will say responsively, number 146, Hallelujah! Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Put not your trust in rulers, nor in any child of earth, for there is no help in them. When they breathe their last, they return to earth, and in that day their thoughts perish. Happy are they who have the God of Jacob for their help, whose hope is in the Lord their God. Who made heaven and earth, the seas and all that is in them, who keeps his promise forever. Who gives justice to those who are oppressed, and food to those who hunger. The Lord sets the prisoners free, the Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord cares for the stranger. He sustains the orphan and widow, but frustrates the way of the wicked. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, throughout all generations. Hallelujah. Our epistle this morning is taken from the letter to the Hebrews. <clears throat> Christ did not enter a sanctuary made by human hands, a mere copy of the true one, but he entered into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God on our behalf. Nor was it to offer himself again and again, as the high priest enters the holy place year after year with blood that is not his own, for then he would have to suffer again and again, since the foundation of the world. But as it is, he has appeared once for all at the end of the age to remove sin by the sacrifice of himself. And just as it is appointed for mortals to die once, and after that the judgment, so Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, God. Uh, 
Our hymn before the gospel is hymn 686. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Teaching in the temple, Jesus said, Beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and to be <laughs> greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to have the best seats in the synagogues and places of honor at banquets. They devour widows' houses and, for the sake of appearance, say long prayers. They will receive the greater condemnation. He sat down opposite the treasury and watched the crowd putting money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which are worth a penny. Then he called his disciples and said to them, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury. For all of them have contributed out of their abundance. But she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Happy are they whose hope is in the Lord their God. Happy are they whose hope is in the Lord. Starting from God asking Abraham to kill his beloved son Isaac and going all the way through the resurrection appearances, the Bible 
has everything to do with faith. Faith. Abraham had faith. He was prepared to sacrifice his son as a burnt offering. God said, here's what I want you to do. Abraham said he was going to do it. And he was rewarded. He was blessed for his faith in God. God made his offspring as numerous as the stars of heaven. So, faith. This morning, our Old Testament reading and the psalm and the gospel are all about faith. In the reading from 1 Kings, Elijah meets a widow and he asks her for just a morsel of bread. And the widow says all she has is a handful of unbaked meal and a little oil. She says she plans to take them home, prepare some bread, and then she and her son will eat it and die. Yikes. So we know the woman, like widows of her time, had nothing. Really nothing as in nothing, not even hope. She was getting ready to die with her son. Elijah says to her in words that ring all through the Bible, do not be afraid. He tells the widow to make little cakes of the meal for him and herself and her son, and he promises promises her They will not run out of meal and oil until the day the Lord finally makes it rain. So the widow did as Elijah said, and we know the rest. Everyone ate for many days and never ran out. Sort of a uh, a precursor to the feeding of the 5,000. Faith. Psalm 146 is the first of the last five psalms. There are 150 psalms in the book of Psalms. The last five, starting with today's, 146, are all about praising God. They all start with praise the Lord. The book of Psalms up until then is a collection of hymns and poems and prayers that express a whole range of Jewish emotion. The whole spectrum of feelings toward God, anger and complaint and resentment and so on, through all the ups and downs of their national history. And then we get to the last five hymns the last five hymns of praise to God. That is the conclusion. Just unmixed praise in five different hymns. They all start with praise the Lord. The Jews have been through all manner of agony and defeat, stuff that would permanently demoralize and make cynical any sensible people. But here they are with their hallelujahs. Hallelujah. That is real faith. Psalm 146 today says, I will praise the Lord as long as I live. Happy are they whose hope is in the Lord their God, who keeps his promise forever, who gives justice to those who are oppressed, food to those who are hungry, The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord shall reign throughout all generations. Hallelujah. That is faith. It sounds almost, forget almost, it sounds naive 
today when we think about all the trials and frustrations and divisions and animosity and all the stuff that we're going through now, to hear all this hallelujah sounds, what, what part of this are you not getting? But it's wonderful. All we have to remember as we think about today and so on is that the Jews went through all that and more. They really went through it. And at the end of the book of Psalms, we have five hymns of praise. Today's epistle is from the letter to the Hebrews. It's not about faith, except to say that Christ will come again for those who wait for him when you get all, all through today's gospel, uh, uh, today's epistle reading, this and that, you finally come to the punchline, which is Christ will come again for those who wait for him. Two chapters later in the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 11, we get that wonderful definition of faith. What's faith? Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. The gospel lesson this morning, which is also in Luke's gospel, is the account of the widow's offering at the temple. When I was growing up, it was the widow's might. M-I-T-E, might. It is now, we're, we're now near the end of Jesus' ministry. In fact, we're now in Holy Week. The three years of ministry in, in Galilee and healing and teaching, and that's all behind us. We've now come down into Judea and, and gotten to Jerusalem. We're at the end of the story already had the cleansing of the temple. So this is probably when Tuesday or Wednesday of Holy Week. Jesus has been teaching in the temple at Jerusalem, and he's not just been kind of holding forth, I guess the way I am now. Uh, instead, all manner of chief priests and scribes and elders and Pharisees and Sadducees and Herodians. They've all been taking turns trying to challenge and question and trap Jesus, get him to say something awkward. And after several hours of this, Jesus is getting a little tired of it all. So he goes off on them a little bit. He calls them out on their hypocrisy for their extravagant clothes and their long prayers and their preening in public while they live off income that has been extorted from, well, extorted from lots of people, but in particular from widows. His condemnation echoes Jesus in the previous chapter when he cleanses the temple courtyard, calls it a den of thieves. Now, after several hours of all this questioning and trapping, and he must have been thinking, yikes, this is, this is God's temple. Then he sits down and watches the people making their offerings to the temple treasury. A poor widow puts in two of the smallest copper coins that there are. They're not even coins. There's no engraving or milling or any of that. They're just two little bits of metal. Jesus can tell it is all the woman 
hands in the world, leaving her literally penniless. He, call, he calls the disciples over to witness this act of total sacrifice. And he says to them, this poor widow has put in more than all those, all those other people. Jesus saw something in the woman's heart and soul, and it moved him. He saw a spirit of trust and generosity. He saw charity in the person least equipped to be charitable. He saw faith. Unlike the widow who shared all she had with Elijah, and unlike Abraham, we don't know what happened to the widow in the temple. There's no narrative that comes along afterwards that says that she prospered and went on her way and had a lot of children. No, we don't know any of that. But we know that she became an ideal and a heroine in the Christian church. She became famous. That poor widow is also the model of giving to the church, and that makes her a good jumping-off place for a stewardship sermon. So I will say something here about stewardship. And I do so without hesitation. The reason I feel as comfortable as I do speaking about it is because there is so much faith at St. John's. So much faith. You can just reach out and touch it. Evidence of that faith is all around at St. John's. For starters, in 2021, even with all the trials this year about, well, all the difficult things about 2021 that could have come between us and St. John's, the average pledge gift average was 2,200... Sorry, $2,628, $2,628 average, which is wonderful. In fact, it's remarkable. Second, the income and assets of St. John's are well and carefully managed. The budget is balanced. Using a maximum 5% takedown from the endowment, the budget is balanced. Next, our beautiful building is being methodically restored bit by bit. Uh, this magnificent building is, a lot, is in a lot better shape than it was a year ago. For the first time in years, to the glory of God and the community, Beyond that, St. John's is unique in my experience, and that happens to be true, in the caring we all show to each other. We are happy for each other's joys, and we share each other's sadness, and we're genuinely eager to help. Again, examples of this are are too many to mention. As importantly, St. John's is generous to those in need, to strangers outside our walls. A meaningful part of the budget goes to what's called outreach. You may have heard this story before, but it bears repeating. I was at another parish not far from here and I asked uh, I asked the senior warden senior warden said 
what's the outreach budget here? And his answer was, what is outreach? The formal outreach program here extends from the food pantry in Lakeville to a health project in Haiti. It includes the visiting nurse, associate, uh, visiting nurse and hospice association. And it includes a fund to benefit cancer patients and their families in need. And it includes a chore service to help seniors and disabled remain in their homes. So, in 2022, I would like to see us add to this list the Episcopal Migration Ministries, Episcopal Migration Ministries, which helps refugees, including from Afghanistan, helps refugees find security, resettling in the U.S. There was a fellow at, at 8 o'clock this morning who said, yeah, he knows, he knows about that. Uh, there are 30, according to him, there are 30 families so far who've been resettled in Connecticut, not the U.S., in Connecticut. Uh, that ministry puts into action our Lord's teaching that we love strangers as our neighbors, Who's our neighbor? Our neighbor is the person we don't even know. So, Episcopal Migration Ministries. Next, I am really, really tempted here to mention four outstanding examples in 2021 of generosity in the parish. Two were financial, two were non-financial, but I know the actors would just be embarrassed. Suffice to say, they were all unsolicited, just spontaneous, magnificent acts of love, aided and abetted, certainly, by the Holy Spirit, but four, not one or two, four extraordinary acts of love. Finally, our vestry went on a retreat last month, and I think it's fair to say that we all came away with a, a renewed uh, excitement about St. John's and a renewed um, commitment to St. John's in particular, an impulse to become even more enmeshed in the Salisbury community and ideas of how to do that. Not explicitly to try to expand membership or attendance at change, but just on the merits. Just because God is calling us to do that. I have great faith in St. John's because I see all the time how much faith its people have. I would compare it to other parishes, but let me just leave it at this. St. John's is indeed special, really special. We are blessed to be a part of it. Our attendance and membership are down from years past, certainly. We all know that. But that's maybe not the final measure. Our health and spirit and vitality are not down at all. Maybe the reverse. I believe our future is secure if we are just, if we just are a certain way. If we go on acting 
in that certain way. And then trust the Holy Spirit to take over This past Wednesday, two people joined us for the healing service from Maryland. They were visiting in Lakeville, and we might never see them again, although I did get the email. (coughs) But they were effusive about how much it helped them that St. John's was here to welcome them and how much they needed and appreciated it and so on. That kind of thing happens a lot here. I will close with a pet saying from Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. God be praised. Love your neighbor. Amen. Amen. Let us stand, please, and say together on page 326. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our prayers of the people this morning continue on page 328 of the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ, church, and the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, receive these, our prayers, which we offer unto thine divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. 
Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, remembering especially Father Chris and Father Lance, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially our president, our Congress, our judiciary, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we, humbly, and we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor Art, Bonnie, Julia, and all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. We also pray this morning for all those who travel on land, sea, and air this coming week. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of St. John and all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. And now let us turn in our prayer books to page 58. Page 58, and say together the general thanksgiving. Page 58. Together let us pray, Almighty God, Father, Father of all, all mercies, we thine unworthy, unworthy servants, servants do, do give, give thee most humble and hearty thanks, thanks for all thy goodness, goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. men. We bless, we bless thee, thee for, for our creation, preservation, preservation and all, all the blessings, blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Lord. Christ. For, for the, the means, means of grace and for the hope of glory. glory. And, and we, we beseech thee, give us, us that due sense of all thy mercies, mercies that our hearts, hearts may be unfaintedly thankful, thankful, and, and that, that we show, show forth thy praise, not only, only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee, holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom we be in the Holy Ghost, be all honor and glory, world, world without God. end. Amen. Amen. Let us kneel, please, as we are able, and say together on page 331. At the bottom of page 331. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against thee in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, by what we have left undone, we have not loved thee with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in thy will and walk in thy ways to, to the glory of thy name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, 
pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace, John. Peace, Kathy. Peace, Joe. Mika. Peace to you. Good to see you. Peace, Barbara. Peace, Louise. Good morning. Remind me. Glad to see you. That's a familiar name. Yes, sir. Uh, please be seated. Oh, I miss Thea. Thea, good to see you. Peace, David. Uh, thank you for being here. Eight o'clock service this morning. I have really mixed feelings about that because all it means is they're not here now. <laughs> but... Whatever. Uh, this is still a good group. <laughs> uh, welcome back, please. Go. She only. Out of North very elaborate really piano work. Um, are there any uh, birthday? Milestones that we need to know about, anyone? Uh, Barbara, do you want to say anything or no? Okay, not looking at you. Just...
Lord be with you. With thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, according to whose true promise the Holy Ghost came down from heaven, lighting upon the disciples to teach them and to lead them into all truth, uniting peoples of many tongues in the confession of one faith and giving to thy church the power to serve thee as a royal priesthood and to preach the gospel to all nations. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy. All glory be to thee, O Lord our God, for that thou didst create heaven and earth, and didst make us in thine own image, and of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made there a full and perfect sacrifice for the whole world. In the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. When he had given thanks to thee, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we thy people do celebrate and make with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial of his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming again with power and great glory. And we humbly beseech thee, o, o merciful Father, to hear us, and with thy word and Holy Spirit bless and sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be unto us the body and blood of thy dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, whereby we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies. Grant, we beseech thee, that all who partake of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. And also that we and all thy whole church may be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom 
and with whom and in whom in the unity of the Holy Ghost all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Now as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is given for thee. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for thee.
on page 339, please. Let us pray together. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost feed us in, the, in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Just assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us that we are very members in corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, blessed company of all faithful people. We are also heirs through hope thy everlasting kingdom. We humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Peace of God, which passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you this day, this week, and forevermore. Amen. Our closing hymn is hymn 57.
in Advent. So you Fourth Pentecost. <laughs> <laughs>